and I'm Ezra Kissel. I'm not quite as far away as India. I'm from Indiana University, and uh, I'm a research software engineer there. Um, I work with Martin Sweeney, who's faculty at Indiana. Uh, we've been working on the Globus Toolkit for, for quite a number of years. We have collaborated with Dan Gunter from LBNL, um, who's helped us integrate a lot of the monitoring frameworks that he's been working on into some of the sort of end-to-end uh, -end measurements that we've been collecting from, from grid FTP transfers. And then Jason Zorowski from Internet2, who's been instrumental in helping us test out and, and experiment with a lot of the uh, prototype software that we developed within the Globus Toolkit over real networks. So to frame my presentation a bit, the, the space we're working in is something in the Globus Toolkit called the XIO framework, or the Extensible Input-Output Framework. Uh, given this is a, you know, a Globus community, I'm sure many of you are familiar with it. But the idea here is that it provides um, modular drivers that can be loaded within the Globus Toolkit and used by applications that are developed on it, including Grid FTP. And it really provides this idea of a, a, soft, or a driver stack uh, where you can have multiple drivers that are implemented um, that you can load dynamically when the server is operating uh, that perform certain functionality on top of the underlying transport driver, which is responsible for actually putting the bits on the wire. So, you know, the transport drivers are the built-in TCP driver, UDT driver, and so forth. And then on, on top, you can have a number of, of transform drivers like GSI security and, and, the, and the actual features that we've developed, uh, which is built on XSP. I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, that can add additional functionality for monitoring and, and something that we're working on now is dynamic pass signaling and supporting, you know, bulk transfers with grid FTP. And the other thing we've looked at is adding uh, library support into the, the driver framework for doing WAN acceleration using uh, a software um, project called Phoebus. So I'll talk a bit about that as well. <coughs> so what is XSP? XSP is an extensible session protocol. It's a protocol framework that we've been developing at Indiana University. Um, it is a session layer protocol. It exists at layer five in the OSI model, so it allows us to do encapsulation of protocol or of control and data um, protocol units and basically provide a negotiation session between applications and services in the network services that applications might be interested in, in, in manipulating and providing additional services for particular session based applications. So, one, one interesting thing that the XSP framework allows us to do is provide a set of functionality that applications might want to use frequently. So we have this idea of a service handler framework in XSP that exports um, things like security handlers, uh, so you can use different types of security mechanisms to talk to various service and services in the network. We have a, a pass framework where you can have underlying mechanisms for signaling into the network to set up dynamic pass. Um, naming and addressing support. And the idea is to make it a very extensible protocol framework that allows you to add additional functionalities that would be useful for interacting with applications and other in-the-network services. And in, in the context of monitoring, it's useful uh, to think of a session in the most literal sense. It's really a, p a t period of time devoted to a particular activity. And you know, the, the notion of a session provides a uh, sort of a natural uh, concept of state where you can associate um, things like measurement context, how many parallel streams you're running, um, what, you know, sort of the provenance information that, that's going along with the particular activity that's happening in the network and on the end host. So we, we use this framework to basically provide a mechanism to, to bind together the information that we're interested in during a transfer and, and provide the control and data signaling that's used to either transfer measurement information or to, to basically instantiate additional active measurements that we're interested in. So we've, we've basically taken the XSP client library and integrated it into something called XIO XSP, which is a Globus XIO driver. You can load this um, from the client. If you're familiar with the sort of data channel stack flags, file system stack flags, and that basically adds a transport driver to the driver stack that the grid FTP servers can, can use. And you can specify parameters to the driver to enable certain functionality. So the use cases we have are monitoring, with the NetLogger API and, and, and library that Dan Gunter at LBNL has developed, uh, Calipers, which is an in-memory summarization version of NetLogger, and Periscope, which is our, our measurement framework for actually collecting a lot of data from grid FTP transfers themselves. <clears throat> Another use case is dynamic network provisioning. So we support things like being able to reserve OSCARS circuits, uh, be able to configure open flow devices in the network on behalf 
of the, the client request to actually start a grid FTP transfer. So we can sort of do that behind the scenes dynamically and, and support certain classes of high performance uh, data flows. <clears throat> and then of course the WAN acceleration use case using Phoebus gateways and I'll talk a little bit about that uh, later on. So the, the first area is really this, this, the, uh, this idea of end-to-end -end measurement and being able to get a sense of what's happening during a bulk data transfer. And in many cases, you know, we have a good idea of what's happening over core networks. Um, you know, Perfsonar has been instrumental in being able to provide wide area network monitoring and a federated multi-domain um, you know, environment in, in general. Um, but what has often been missing is sort of the end host perspective or the end site perspective. Um, you know, so users can, and administrators may spend a substantial amount of time trying to debug performance issues um, just to realize that it's really not the network's fault. There might be tuning issues on the end host. There might be disk I.O. bottlenecks. There might be a failed disk. So it, it's, it's really, uh, the idea here is to try to get a little more visibility into what's happening, not just in the network, but from the end-to-end -end perspective, the end hosts included. And in particular, the application. What can the applications themselves tell us about what kind of performance uh, a particular end-to-end -end transfer is experiencing? So XIO XSP integrates the NetLogger summarization, and we can instrument um, calls within the, the XIO framework. So read and write calls, and the calipers can summarize all of that information in memory. Um, we basically have the interface that talks to our XSP daemon, which implements the protocol framework, and we can do col uh, collation and aggregation of these metrics, and then forward them to our measurement framework called Periscope. Uh, which everyone has a RESTful interface. Uh, we have our own as well. Uh, it, it's a RESTful interface to a, a general measurement store that collects measurements. And this, this thing called the Unified Network Information Service, or UNIS, which collects metadata about the measurements that are collected, as well as uh, collects topology information, not only from the end sites, but can integrate with Perfsonar network monitoring to sort of bring together all the different topology segments and, and, and unify them so you can have a uh, basically a, a topology-aware network monitoring system. <clears throat> uh, the other component here that we've integrated is BLIP. It's called Basic Lightweight Periscope Probes. It's basically an agent that can run on the end hosts and collect additional metrics, uh, such as host and disk performance, um, things from the PROC file system, for instance, or, or can even initiate um, collection of things like Web10G statistics for if, if the kernel supports it, and sort of integrate that into Periscope and make all of those metrics available. <clears throat> so what are we actually collecting from, from Grid FTP? I don't know if that's visible, but I just wanted to get a, uh, give a sense of you know, the, the actual metadata that we're collecting about transfers. Um, if, if you're familiar with the Perf Sonar and MWG framework, we have uh, you know, similar uh, fields here, like event type, which is basically what metric are we collecting. In this case, we're collecting summary about write events that are happening within within uh, the grid FTP transfer. Um, we have parameters, such as the collection interval, and of course, how to interpret the data that you're collecting, the data, the schema itself. And then the subject is really describing the resource about which you're collecting data on. So things like that are specific to the grid FTP transfer. So you have a transfer ID, you have the type uh, of metrics that we're collecting, which are on the network stack, uh, as opposed to the file system stack, for instance the source destination, source port, destination port, stream ID, and so forth. So that's really just the metadata block that describes the, the data that we're collecting uh, basically from the instrumentation within the grid FTP XIO stack. And it's basically just time series and values uh, that are reported to the measurement store. And the idea is to sort of normalize all this data so you can have easy to use graphing tools uh, that basically can understand what they're graphing based on the metadata, but have a consistent representation in the data format. <clears throat> and of course, you can see the link from the data to the metadata ID uh, present within this, this data block. So what we've been able to do with, with all these metrics that we collect is to, uh, one of the things we're trying to understand are where the bottlenecks lie on an end-to-end -end transfer. And uh, we did some work, uh, it's published in Scalable Integrated Performance Analysis of Multi-Gigabit Networks where we looked at some of this data offline, and try, we had a 10 gig test bed, we ran a number of tests uh, over a number of different scenarios where we were able to reliably determine where the bottlenecks lay um, given particular network characteristics. So um, this was sort of TCP throughput experiments where we did single stream memory to disk, uh, memory to memory, 
and we're able to identify that the network, for instance, was the bottleneck in each of those cases. Of course, it's, you know, it's kind of obvious when you're going disk to disk with a very high performance um, network. In between, this was a 10 gig network that we were experimenting over. We were able to detect that the disk read was the bottleneck, for instance, and you can see some of the variability there in the performance results. And then we also were able to sort of detect loss events, which we were able to artificially simulate within the testbed environment. And you know, the detection algorithm was able to figure out you know, how that dynamic changed as the network conditions were changing as well. So it, it provides sort of a, a way to analyze what's happening at the application's perspective and sort of match it with what you're seeing on the wide area network as well. <coughs> uh, just a few examples of some you know, more detailed statistics that we can get. When we tried the UDT driver, for instance, we noticed that there were some irregularities in the performance we're getting due to the fact that, or due to, uh, irregularities in the bottleneck detection due to the fact that the UDT driver underneath was buffering data, especially when there was a loss event in the network. Uh, so we saw some in unexpected false positives there. And what we were able to do with the, the metrics that were being collected is sort of dive down deeper uh, to look at things like the number of successful reads per sample, so the variance um, as there was a loss event in the network, how the variance of the various reads that were collected from the XAO framework changed. And then we could also correlate that to you know, host metrics uh, to show that CPU load would drop. Uh, obviously, there's less work being done when you experience loss in the network. You're not sending as much data over the network. So you're, be you're really able to get a holistic view of what's happening uh, throughout this end-to-end -end transfer. So. Oh, that's, that's really blurry. <laughs> well, one of the things uh, that we were trying to do, this was a few years ago at Supercomputing 11, is, uh, is to basically provide a sense of topology-aware monitoring where we took a section of ESNet's uh, wide area network, uh, network in ESNet 4, I believe, and we were able to basically import the topology from perf, perf sonar, and we had input from grid transfers during log monitoring that were able to display them and you were, you were able to select on each of the transfers that were currently active per user, and it would be visualized on this uh, topology display. You could click on the topology elements to bring up performance charts uh, and basically get a sense uh, of what was happening in the network uh, over you know, a large-scale grid test. So uh, it's just one of the ways that you can sort of extract all the data from the Periscope system, get the end-to-end -end metrics, get the wide-area network metrics, uh, and correlate them with the topology that you're seeing uh, in, in a particular environment. So the other thing I wanted to talk about is the ability for the XSP driver to signal into dynamic circuit environments and to set up paths on behalf of bulk data flows. Uh, so one of the things that we've been able to enable is, is provide a common interface to pass provisioning and being able to set up paths on using systems like ESNet's Oscars, Internet 2's Ion, uh, if they're open flow devices and an end site, we can use XSP driver to push flow entries into these devices to set up uh, dynamic VLANs, uh, for instance. We can even do a Linux end host um, configuration to set up you know, host routing and interface configuration, as well as take advantage of, of the new OS3 NDDI capability or Internet 2's Advanced Layer 2 services, uh, which is offering a 100 gig open flow network. <coughs> so the, the other thing that one of the ways that we've sort of been trying to prototype this functionality with Grid FTP is to use uh, the Dynes installation, um, which is really a, a cyber infrastructure that's providing storage and dynamic uh, network resources to a number of campuses and, and a bunch of Internet 2 connector sites. And I think there are at least 40, 50 different uh, research universities that are currently involved uh, with the Dynes project. So it's, it's distributing storage and Oscars IDCs for ION to various sites. Uh, we've been actively involved with Caltech, Vanderbilt, University of Michigan, testing out this functionality. Um, so you know, if, if you look at this picture here, this sort of this demonstrates what's possible in the Dynes environment. You can think of two Dynes sites being domain A and domain B. Uh, you would have Grid FTP running on one of the end hosts there that provides a number of uh, storage, a number of, uh, or quite a bit of storage capability where your users can stage their data. And then Grid FTP would sort of dynamically signal our XSPD agent, which would then pr provide different backends to configure um, IDC, uh, IDCP communication between Oscar's domains to set up an end-to-end -end pass between the two end sites before the transfer would go ahead and, and start. So the idea is to provide 
you know, a very general mechanism for, instead of having a user basically go to a website, uh, set up the re reservation ahead of time, we want to sort of make that process transparent and allow the transfers to, or allow the servers themselves to basically instantiate the network configuration that would support a, p a particular type of bulk data flow. So, and I'll talk a little bit about some recent testing uh, we've done with Grid FTP and MultiPass Grid FTP at SC12. This was an entry that we did in, in coordination with, with Raj here um, for, for Supercomputing 12, where we were exploring how to do MultiPass Grid FTP using Dynes and some of the resources that were provided at Supercomputing in the Science Research Sandbox. So the idea here is that we would have multi-homed hosts. We were able to basically create circuits between a couple of different Dyn sites and the showroom floor, making use of both uh, ION circuits over Internet 2, as well as the, the circuits that were provided through AL2S coming into uh, Salt Lake City during SC12. <clears throat> so we had a number of uh, statically provisioned VLANs, and we were able to run grid FTP servers on the Dyn sites as well as uh, in, at Salt Lake and, and, and make use of both the commodity IP and the, the circuit capability that was instantiated dynamically to run um, multi-pass grid FTP, basically splitting parallel streams between um, the various grid FTP servers. And we were able to see some, at least initial performance results, being able to get better performance using both of those available network resources instead of just focusing on one alone. And unfortunately, I mean, I, I put here that many lessons were learned at SC. You know, we initially had very high hopes of being able to use or collect a lot of data, use, use it for publication purposes. But, um, you know, oftentimes when you have a volatile environment with a lot of testing resources, uh, it just doesn't work out. So uh, we had some initial good results, and we had, you know, the capability of doing open flow to redi redirect parallel streams um, across different networks in, in testbed environments. Um, but as, as you move into you know, a volatile environment like supercomputing, um, it, was, it was a good learning experience, let's, let's put it that way. And then finally, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about Grid FTP and XSP uh, using Phoebus. And, and Phoebus is an open source WAN accelerator that we've been working on for a number of years. It was funded by the DOE, now um, funded by the NSF, where we're working on trying to provide better client support and better usability in terms of finding gateways uh, for allowing clients to accelerate their transfers over the, the deployment of Phoebus gateways that we currently have. And, and in a nutshell, really, Phoebus uses XSP to communicate via these things called Phoebus gateways that are placed strategically in the network. Uh, and it allows us to tune and adapt and oftentimes translate between protocols along different segments of a wide area network. So you might be able to do TCP tuning between gateways. Uh, you might even be able to adapt to UDP-based protocols uh, between gateways over backbone network links. And we've developed um, RDMA translation over the WAN as well. So a number of techniques that allows us to transparently adapt from TCP connections on the edge to more optimized uh, performance over wide area network links. And we've developed this capability in, in the XSP and, and also a dedicated Phoebus driver in the Globus XIO framework where you're able to basically redirect uh, TCP flows to ga Phoebus gateways that are deployed in the network and, and automatically get performance benefits uh, just by having them enable on the server and specifying, for instance, a Phoebus pass uh, that, that, that are a number of Phoebus gateways within the network over which the, the data channel now traverses. And we've been able to show a number of good performance gains. Some of the most recent testing that I've done is between Indiana University and Tokyo, which is a, you know, quite, a, quite a long pass. It's 185 milliseconds. Uh, and, the, and even with well-connected end hosts that have been tuned, you know, that can get decent performance, being able to take advantage of WAN acceleration devices, intermediaries in the network that can perform automatic tuning and make better decisions about how your data is routed through the network, we're able to see quite a significant improvements. In this case here, we did a number of tests um, you know, where we saw at least a 20% improvement just by going through one or two Phoebus gateways on the Internet 2 backbone to accelerate these grid FTP transfers. So, I think I should wrap up. In conclusion, I, I've sort of just given an overview of a few topics uh, focused on the performance of grid FTP, accelerating it as well as trying to understand the performance uh, at a more fine-grained detail level. I tried to sort of bring together this idea of end-to-end -end performance uh, measurement. Um, 
right, so we have a flexible and scalable monitoring approach in, in terms of the XAO XSP driver. Uh, we can adapt performance using emergent network technologies and protocols using XSP and Phoebus. And then some of the ongoing work, uh, which I've just talked about this afternoon, is, is to really develop this early prototype of XAO XSP for Globus Online using the Globus Connect multi-user. And again, we're, we're exploring the use of Dynes as one of, the, one of those types of testing instances, as well as a number of uh, other avenues where we can start bringing this functionality in. So I have ho high hopes for that. So thank you for your time. I just want to thank some of our colleagues at Indiana, Internet2 and ESNet. Uh, and of course, uh, our Globus colleagues, uh, some support information. And there's a link to the Phoebus project and my email address if anyone has questions that they'd like to send me offline. And I'd be happy to, to answer any questions here as well. <laughs>